When it comes to Spongebob video games, several of them are commonly known among fans of the show. Revenge of the Flying Dutchman, Battle for Bikini Bottom, and the movie game are popular and nostalgic for people who grew up playing them, but there are ones that just aren't quite as well known. Some of these include the AWE PC titles, many of which were different versions of the console games. Today I'd like to take a look at a game that means so much to me personally, the Spongebob Squarepants movie on PC. Before we get to it, let's give a little recap of the AWE Spongebob scene so far. AWE put out their first game in 2001, a PC game called Operation Krabby Patty. It was a neat little series of minigames, but it was kind of repetitive and buggy. An entire year later, they made Employee of the Month, a point-and-click game where you traveled the ocean to reach a theme park. It was pretty good. Another year later, they made Battle for Bikini Bottom, which seemed to expand on the Operation Krabby Patty format. It was decent, but some of the minigames were unexpectedly hard. Now we come to the Spongebob Squarepants movie, which tried to replicate the style of Employee of the Month rather than Operation Krabby Patty. Notice a pattern here? For a fun little note, this game actually came out a whole month before the movie itself aired. I actually played the game before any of my friends saw the movie, so I was able to tell people all about it. To demonstrate just how important this obscure game was to me as a kid, I remember we had a show-and-tell day at school once, and of all the things a child like me could have brought to class, I brought the manual for this particular game. I am not joking, I played this so much I thought it was worth sharing with my fellow students. One thing I really like about the manual is how they show question marks for the last two stages. That keeps the anticipation high, especially if you're like me and you played this game before the movie came out. I also love the advertisements for other games and products in the back. This is like looking back at history. I'm almost getting teary-eyed just looking at these pictures. Nicktoons basketball, let me tell you. By the way, check out this phone number you can text to play a completely different Spongebob movie game. I wonder if it still works. Who's there? Is this you, Spongebob? It doesn't. As the French narrator would say, without further ado, let's take a look at the Spongebob Squarepants movie on PC. In the beginning, we see Plankton flying on his jetpack toward the island in Bikini Atoll. It's just the intro, but oh, the nostalgia. When you start the game, you actually see this really cool sequence where you enter a ship at night and read the story of the game. Unfortunately, there aren't any animated cutscenes as those were left behind in the Battle for Bikini Bottom adaptation, but this sequence spares us from some of the strange dialogue choices from the last few games. Also, I adore the setup of the ship's cabin. I legitimately want to live here. It looks so cozy. SpongeBob wakes up for the opening of a new Krusty Krab restaurant, and he needs to get ready- Oh my god, the nostalgia. <laughs> Sorry, I just need a minute. Upon immediate observations, this game is very high quality when compared to the ones before it. First of all, it's the first AWE game to feature new music that isn't reused from the first one. Have a listen. Also, I'm not sure if most people would agree, but I love the look of this game. It's just so pleasing to the eye. The mixture of 2D and 3D is a very nice blend. The style really works and doesn't feel too jarring. At an immediate glance, this already looks more promising than any of the games before it. You can also put in a code to unlock secret outfits, but it doesn't always work for some reason. Strange bug. Throughout the first level, you need to get ready for work, but Spongebob has a lot of preparations to get done. I can't go outside in my underwear! Coward. You can interact with things around the level by clicking on them. You need to collect certain objects to use them to your advantage. You can also talk to people by clicking on them, and you can move the conversation forward by choosing different dialogue options. Only one of them usually gets the story going, but most of the time they're just for fun. These pictures are really bland. I want to see sharks or electric eels or something like that. But they're your pictures. Buy some new ones if you hate them so much, jeez. You can also take a shower and Spongebob talks to you directly. I'm not doing it in front of you. Close your eyes. Come on, that's no fair. Over the course of the level, you visit Patrick, who stole your remote, and Squidward because you need to borrow his toothpaste. I also want to eat Patrick's rock. You also learn how much of a jerk Spongebob is. He scares the lights out of a repairman so he can use his phone to call Squidward so Squidward is distracted by a silent caller so he can steal Squidward's toothpaste. Jesus, Spongebob, was stealing Larry's beach toys not enough for you? 
To be fair, Squidward hates Spongebob so much he drew flats beating him up on his kitchen chalkboard that he has for some reason. There are no heroes in this universe. Oh, you're leaving? My horoscope was right! Today is a day of great joy! This quote intrigued me because I never saw Squidward as a big horoscope fan, but then I remembered his Little Zodiac series. I can't help but wonder if this is a subtle nod to it. Not likely, but it's something to think about. Next level, you play as Plankton. That's right, you play as Plankton in this game. This was long before Creature from the Krusty Krab, so this was pretty shocking. Kind of funny how you spend a level doing something you later try to stop as another character. It's a symbol of the oppression of the working class. Also, it's a wrench. God, I love AWE and their political jokes absolutely no child will ever get. After consulting his computer wife, Plankton looks in his file cabinet for Plan Z. This evil plan involves stealing King Neptune's crown and framing Mr. Krabs. I'm not sure where these lettered plans came from, but I always just assumed they were plans Plankton wrote at some point so he wouldn't forget them. You have to distract Robot Spongebob so you can get your jetpack, and it's worth noting how AWE always tried to include as many elements from the show as they could. This is a nice little nod to the show, and believe me, this isn't the last we'll see of Robo Spongebob. I really like that the game has elements that weren't in the movie, so it gives a sense of freshness to the player. Also, let's take a look at the menu when you mess it up. What will you be having? I think I'll try a much burger with a side of chili pie. When you go to Neptune's castle, you play a minigame where you fly on a jetpack and avoid jellyfish. If you fly to the top of the screen, you can pretty much avoid all of them. When you get to the castle, Plankton cracks my favorite joke in any Spongebob game ever. You know why that stable doesn't have windows? Cause who ever heard of stable windows? <laughs> the more I try to run these games on modern computers, the more I agree with this. As you steal things from around the kingdom, you can talk to some creepy looking folks. Seriously, this jester freaked me out as a kid. I hated having to talk to him. He's probably a swell guy, but he freaking terrifies me. Once you're done with Joker Larry the Cucumber, you can steal Neptune's crown. Then we begin our next story transition that tells how Neptune froze Mr. Krabs and Spongebob must go to Shell City to get the crown back. If you haven't seen the movie, that's the place the crown was sold to. Squidward talks to you about the Paddy Mobile, which you can take to get to Shell City. However, you need a pass card to get to it. There's also a reference to Employee of the Month. Hi! You look familiar! Where have I seen you before? You can also scare the repairman again for absolutely no reason. While this level is pretty cool, it's filled with these annoying walk cycles where absolutely nothing happens and you have to just sit there and wait while Spongebob walks to another location. What would Patchy think about this? It's worth mentioning that to get the pass card, you go to Goofy Goober's Ice Cream Party Boot where the greatest character in gaming history awaits you. It's my super magic fairy card of power. I found it at the Krusty Krab. Ooh, can I have it? No, I found it. It's mine. Hmm. I guess I might trade it for some fried ice cream. Hey, don't knock it till you've tried it. I love this guy. Seriously, he's just so funny to me. Why is he so obsessed with fried ice cream? Why does this lost card mean so much to him? What does he even use a super magic fairy card of power for? Why is he so deadpan with everything he says? Morty is truly an enigma. Once you deep fry ice cream and get the card, you can get in the patty mobile with Patrick who's making sweet love to it. However, you get a mid-level cutscene where the car gets stolen, which strands Spongebob and Patrick in front of these weird gas station attendants. I actually love this one guy's voice a lot more here than in the movie. Okay, I'm back. No sheet music in my pockets. I have no idea what you're talking about. And I think we should stop talking about it right now. When you head over to Thug Tug, Patrick goes to use the bathroom and you need to get the key of your car back. The two-headed guys also have voices that could rival the movies. We're drinking rusty dirt water and trying to remember the words to a song. You blow bubbles to distract everyone while you get the key. Next level is interesting because it wasn't actually in the movie at all. You play as King Neptune's daughter Mindy and you've been locked in your room for... some reason. You have to escape to help Spongebob. It's awesome that the game gives you the chance to really explore Neptune's kingdom. I don't think any other form of Spongebob media has allowed for something like that. However, some things are a little dark. Unlike in the movie, the crown polisher actually has been thrown in the dungeon and he does not get a happy ending. AWE games have always had some grim elements to them. 
Also, the terrifying jester is gone, so I'm just gonna assume the best and say they killed him. It's a pretty short level if you know what you're doing. I also never realized as a kid that you give the jailer a dungeon master's guide from Dungeons and Dragons. Mindy convinces SpongeBob and Patrick that they're men and they head off into the abyssal plain, which is shrouded in fog. Smells like heat. Yeah, it does. It's horrible. Oh, I kind of like it. Careful, Patrick. You know what they say about Dan Schneider. I'm not going to lie. This level scared me half to death as a kid. I was so terrified of everything in it, I didn't even want to continue playing. Just walking further into the fog was too much for me, especially with that creepy wanderer you meet in it. It's too foggy to see. I could get eaten by a Gru. You can head into this hotel for an interesting mystery subplot. I absolutely love this atmosphere, even though I once found it horrifying. Even the way the characters speak gives me shivers. Oh, the sheer luck with which I've been graced. Someone fan me, I may faint. I would love to see this hotel plot fully animated because it's legitimately really awesome. The atmosphere is perfect, the music is haunting, and everything is seriously spine-tingling. The creepy old lady has lost her pearls and you have to help her find them. You can ask around and oh my god this guy is scary. Why is everyone so intimidating in this world? The pearls were actually stolen by an oyster under the hotel, which is a very clever tie-in to real oceanic life. It's rare you see fish actually doing fishy things in Spongebob. Also, it's on a literal oyster bed, get it? Further down this foreboding road, you reach a cave Patrick refuses to go in. You meet an explorer named Charles Oscar William Piedmont Augustus Winthrop, yes I memorized it, and he tells you about three trials that await you further in the cave. A thundering voice narrates you through the corridors of confusion, where you have to enter colored doors in the correct order to reach the pool of perception. This old man, who, like everyone else, is utterly horrifying, tells you the focusing orb has been stolen. It is required to lift the fog, which will allow you to continue on your path. You get the orb in question from finding the old lady's pearls, but I have to take a moment to talk about the pool of perception. The way this guy describes it is... really unnerving. Each time you look into the pool, you look further and further into your own future. That can be dangerous. Dangerous, huh? Yes. Knowing your own future can destroy an individual's sense of free will. Free will, huh? Yes. The temptation to contradict what you see as your own future can cause a person to do drastic things. The pool of perception allows you to see the future, something I was too afraid to do when I played this game for the first several times. Actually looking into it a couple times will give you the right answer to the final trial. However, looking into the pool of perception will literally show you Spongebob being dead. Apparently he and Squidward are canonically buried next to each other. With the orb returned, the old man lets you through another corridors of confusion, and then you have to guess the right door to reach the orb's room. I can happily say I guessed right on my first try, even without looking into the pool. What, let me just be a little cocky here. All I can say is, wow. That level was actually extremely creative and original. This is what I'm talking about when I say this game is great for including fresh content that isn't in the actual movie. The next level is another original story that doesn't borrow from the movie at all. Dennis appears in the storybook, but he doesn't actually appear in the game, which is kind of weird, but at least they acknowledged him. The level involves walking past a chiropractor where invertebrates are protesting outside because they want the right to see the doctor. Even though they don't have bones, they want the right to see him just for the sake of having it. Not to get political, but I really don't know what to think about this situation. On one hand, it may be good for them to see the doctor if they have unknown back problems so they can be directed to the right treatment. But they can just do that at a regular doctor for much cheaper. Invertebrates making appointments may possibly prevent vertebrates with actual problems from getting the treatments they need. But Dr. Louis will make money out of it anyway, so what does he care? I legitimately don't know how to feel here. If you have your own opinions, go ahead and comment below. I'd like to see a legitimate political conversation arise from this. He is a busy man. He does not have time to chit chat with the riffraff. Does he have time to fiddle faddle with the flim flam? I do not ask him about his personal business. That is a masturbation joke. You need to help the protesters by getting Dr. Louie and their leader Octavio to come to an agreement. 
You have to use a sea urchin spine to get in to see the doctor because SpongeBob and Patrick don't have spines of their own. I remember seeing an episode many years later where they actually did have spines and this continuity error kind of ticked me off. It's not just a continuity error, it's scientifically inaccurate. Honestly, there is no story reason for this level whatsoever, but it's like having a whole SpongeBob episode in a much bigger game. I also love the designs in this level. I really hate that Octavio's room is only in the final cutscene because it looks like it would be super fun to explore. Also, there's kind of a mini game where you have to go through this dark maze to reach both sides of the map. It's not really a challenge, and I don't really know why it's here. I guess they assumed the level would be too short without it. After you get the two political parties to calm down, it's on to Shell City. Turns out Shell City is a gift shop, which came as a surprise to us because the movie wasn't out yet. And this human they call the Cyclops puts Spongebob and Patrick under a lamp so they die and he can put their corpses on display. Unlike in the movie, Patrick somehow survives and needs to rehydrate Spongebob. This gives you the chance to explore Shell City for a short while. This is such a fun stage to explore, especially because everything is so much bigger than you. My biggest gripe is that it's too short. I would have liked to have done some more exploring of such a unique environment. You find an onion and cry to bring Spongebob back to life, then you turn the sprinklers on and get the crown. Unlike in the movie, you don't see the dead fish come back to life. If you click on one, Spongebob has a throwaway line where he goes, ah, they should be fine, but you never actually see it happen. This is probably because of budget restrictions, but it may give the Shell City arc a more somber ending than it originally had. Outside, Patrick says you need to summon a mythical beast to get back to Bikini Bottom. We can ride the- Okay, that's hilarious. They use the in-show sensor effect because they can't legally say David Hasselhoff in this game. This universe gives far more explanation for Hasselhoff than the movie does. In hindsight, that scene was a lot more bizarre and absurd than I realized as a child. They literally do not explain him at all. He just shows up as this mecha human who's perfectly fine with talking sea creatures and knows what they're trying to do. In this, he's a legendary beast who helps people who find his whistle and call him. However, they don't explain how Patrick knows about him. Maybe he did his research before coming to Shell City. He's a lot smarter than we sometimes give him credit for. When you get back to Bikini Bottom, everyone's been enslaved by Plankton and they're all wearing bucket helmets. Patrick runs off to be interviewed by Perch Perkins, and you have to figure out how to break Plankton's control. While in the movie, Spongebob playing the guitar to free everyone was just some absurd reason to have an awesome musical number, there's actually a scientific reason in the game. This rocker guy says a high enough frequency would disrupt the communication signal or something like that, so you have to find a guitar, get it set up, and jam out. You have to go into the chum bucket and guess who's back. Told you we hadn't seen the last of him. You play this game where you collect Krabby Patties for no reason while avoiding the Robo Spongebob. It's a little hard, surprisingly. Not too much, though. I think they got the balance just right. You have to do this both coming and going from the kitchen. When you get all your stuff set up, you have to play one last minigame where you hit notes as they show up at the right colored chord. This could be the first instance of Spongebob having a rhythm game of some kind. The buttons on the bottom do absolutely nothing. They're just there to confuse you. When you finish the stage, Spongebob saves everyone with the power of rock and roll and you win the game. And that was the Spongebob Squarepants movie on PC. It was a lot to get through, but what an adventure. We made fried ice cream, we went through the abyssal plain, we solved the political conflict, we made it to Shell City, and we jammed the hell out. Overall, this game is really good. Even if you prefer the console version, you can't deny this is a satisfying experience with a lot of original content to keep everything new. At the same time, it doesn't lose sight of the story at hand. This is far more refined than any AWE game before it, and aside from the nostalgic value, it's a really good point-and-click game. My biggest criticism is honestly the lack of minigames. I don't really care for the ones they do have, but if they're going to have them, they may have been better off having one per stage or something like that. Having roughly four, two of which are in the same stage and one that can barely be considered a minigame, it feels like an unnecessary feature rather than an established theme. I still enjoy them, though. It's hard to say anything bad about this fun little adventure. AWE really outdid themselves with this one. Thank you all so much for watching. I will see you in the next memory. Fried ice cream.